press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello students, welcome back to your social science class. Uh, today we are going to finish up the lesson, okay? We were dealing with the lesson entrepreneurship and uh, we will discuss the last part that's there that is profile of some successful entrepreneurs that are there. Now there's nothing much uh, that's very hard here but you just know on an overview what, what they have done, that's it. Just uh, to seek inspiration for our, uh, whatever they have done and from whatever they have been successful in doing it. So we'll go one by one, uh, we'll see how they have uh, influenced others and how they have started, what they have started, how they have done. Now before I go there, I, uh, I hope you have read the textbook, okay? Uh, and this lesson is slightly uh, easier comparatively to the other lessons because this is uh, something that generally you will have to know. Some general terms and general ideas that are uh, needed to be put in place. The rest of them, I think you can remember it on your own. Only a uh, few of the aspects that you will have to know uh, because most of the lesson here is uh, interconnected in a way. You let, it, you let it be your characteristics, let it be your functions, okay, importance or the roles that are there. All right, we'll uh, move into the profile of some successful entrepreneurs. Please follow your uh, copies, 165. So we'll go to the first person there, Dr. Pratap Reddy. Dr. Pratap Reddy has uh, developed the first hospital group. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything new, okay? It's there in your textbook. So we'll just follow what's there in the text. After which, you can look it up in the internet for extra information. Okay, uh, he has started the Apollo hospitals and that brought a lot of change into the healthcare sector. That brought a lot of change into the healthcare system that was there. And today they have almost 750 hospitals all over their uh, country. And they are working with modern facilities. They are working, they're working with modern facilities and they are uh, giving a lot of uh, best health care, okay, uh, I, I'll put it like this, best health care system for their patients who come. Apollo hospitals are uh, known everywhere, the staff is well equipped, uh, well trained in whatever they have to do. Now, when did Dr. Reddy uh, get this idea was, uh, when he became a patient and he could not go to uh, Texas in America, he couldn't go to America and what he had to do there, he had an heart surgery to do, okay, and he was, it is not possible for to, him to go to America and that is when he realized that uh, medical sectors or we should have certain infrastructure here in our country itself. Why do we run to foreign countries for uh, our health system? Why do we run for foreign, why do we run to foreign countries for our health care? Why can't we treat ourselves in our own country? And that's that's what striked him when he was a heart patient and he had to undergo a surgery for his heart. And that is how he uh, tried to make medical facilities or infrastructure affordable and accessible to all people here, okay, at an affordable price. Next person there is Naresh Goyal. He is the founder and chairman of Jet Airways. Now this is a domestic airline, domestic is within the country, domestic airline that is running under private, it's a private sector that is there. Now, uh, Mr. Naresh, he worked with a traveling agency or travel business, okay, a travel business after his graduation, that's after his degree. And then in uh, 1974, he wanted to, uh, he, ha he was, or he started to look after the sales that was there and for marketing of foreign airlines in India. That is, this flight was domestic, that is within the country. He wanted to look for sales. So he wanted to look for flights that are coming from foreign countries to our country, okay? Then in 1917, uh, Mr. Naresh Goyal, what did he do? He took up an advantage uh, that is of the open sky policy of the Indian government 
and he set up Jet Airways, okay? Jet Airways uh, was set up for the air service of domestic flights in India. Next person is Narayan Murthy. Now, um, they have begun, uh, he's the founder of Infosys Technologies Limited in 1999, okay? He became the first Indian uh, or his company became the first Indian company to be uh, listed under the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations, okay? NAS, NASDAQ. Now, this is just for your information. Uh, you may take it lightly. Uh, his, his company was the first one to be, uh, first Indian company to be registered there. Then in 2017, he employed over 2 lakh people and then he had, uh, uh, he had this investment uh, topple up. He had his investment go up to uh, $10 billion. Why has he been able to do it? Because of his honesty, because of his transparent nature that is not, in, not involving in things that are not uh, important, but keeping it clear for everybody there. And moral integrity, he kept his values high. Now these were the uh, factors for his success. Uh, he is assisted by his uh, wife and other, other family. Now, Vergis Kurian. Vergis Kurian is uh, an Indian social entrepreneur and he is known as the father of white revolution. Now, white here is referred to uh, milk. Okay, you may have to remember that. Father of white revolution. Why he is uh, termed like that or why he is remembered like that is for millions of liters of milk flow. That is Amul milk. Okay. Amul milk uh, is achievement of this man, Vargis Kurian. He uh, tried to do a lot of development in the sector of agriculture, okay? A lot of agricultural programs were put by him, especially uh, with delivery of uh, this dairy uh, and setting up of dairy and uh, so that he can uh, distribute the milk everywhere. That's how Amul milk and its uh, milk products began, okay? Now everybody has somewhere used Amul milk, isn't it? We, maybe regular use or otherwise Amul milk is widespread everywhere. Now he started it very small. That is he didn't um, put a big business at the beginning, but a very small scale industry, okay? Small scale. How did he start? He started as Anand Milk Diary in Kaira district in uh, Gujarat. Okay, so what did, how did he start? He started as Anand Milk Diary in Kaira district. And that has now turned up to be the, one of the largest enterprises in India. Okay, distribution of milk and milk products, dairy and dairy products. Next is Dhirubhai Ambani. Okay, now this man he uh, has been also a successful person in whatever he has done. Now, his life story, rags to riches, okay, reminiscent of rags to riches. That is a proof of how people from rags, what's rags? Like from being into a very poor living or people like just like begging okay just like begging from a very poor condition rags that is you don't have anything from a very to the from the very lowest level that is so poor rags to riches that is he has uh, achieved whatever he has done now why he is remembered a lot because the entire business industry was rewritten by Dhirubhai Ambani. Okay, corporate industry, corporate history was written by him. See, he rewrote, he rewrote Indian corporate history and that is how he built not only a corporate world in corporate business in our country, but globally, okay, but everywhere. Now, Dhirubhai Ambani's father, Diralal Hirachand uh, Ambani's father was a school teacher, okay? Uh, just a second. Uh, 
Okay, Dhirubhai Ambani alias Dira Lal Hirachand Ambani's father was a school teacher. Not his father, but his father's father was a school teacher. And Dhirubhai Ambani started his entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial career. How did he start with this uh, small scale business that he had? Or how did he start very small is he used to sell these bhajan books. How, where did he sell them? He used to sell to these pilgrims who came. Who are pilgrims? If there is a religious place, if there is a lot of worship that's happening there, people come from a far off place to visit there. Okay, pilgrims. So when these pilgrims came to Mount Girnar uh, in the, during the weekends, he used to sell these bhajan books that are there. Okay, then after he finished his matriculation, that's 10th standard, uh, at the age of 16, he moved to Aden in Africa. Dhirubhai, um, uh, Dhirubhai Ambani moved to Aden in Africa. There, what did he work? He worked as a gas station attendant. Okay, like uh, gas station is your uh, uh, petrol services. Okay, gas station attendant and as a clerk. As a clerk there in an oil company. So where was he working? He was working in a gas station. Uh, just we say petrol bunks, okay, gas station. And he was working also as a, in a clerical uh, way, a clerk in the oil company. Then in 1958, he returned back to India with just 50,000 with him. Yes, 50,000 with him. And he set up a textile uh, trading company. That is, I'm trading, I'm giving to others, and I'm making my business through a give and take there. Okay, he set up a textile trading company. Now, his business had, uh, got, uh, under, uh, his business had undergone a lot of changes, and there were uh, divided or diversified, okay, made into new, into core specializations in petrochemicals. So, now he knew how, what his interests were, he knew how he had to, uh, where he had to make his business. So he diversified, he divided it as, one was petrochemicals with additional interests in telecommunications, okay? Telecommunications, information technology, energy, power, retail textiles, infrastructure services, capital markets and logistics. So how did he divide it so much? And this is how he divided into so many sectors. Just uh, see it again. Petrochemicals was there. Okay. Then he went into telecommunication. He went to information technology, IT sectors. He uh, energy, power, retail, textiles, infrastructure services, capital markets and logistics. Then the Reliance Company, which was uh, started, it was started by him and it's now continued by the family is one of the most important entrepreneurships in the world, okay, Reliance Group. You may have heard of or you may have visited the Reliance stores that are there, okay, started by this man and it's now continued by his uh, sons. Next is, next man on the list is Azim Premji, okay, he's the chairman or the head of Wipro Technologies. And this is one of the most uh, largest software technologies or software companies in India. So software, one of the largest software companies in India is uh, Wipro Technologies by Azim Premji. Now, he, when he was a student, who was a student, Premji was a student, he could not go to uh, school or college, okay? He could not continue his education. And uh, because why he could not continue his education was he had to stay back home because his father passed away. Okay, once his father passed away, he was, uh, he had to take the responsibility of the house. Now, uh, there was an annual general body meeting that was done and one of the shareholders there, one man who knew a little about business there, he told Azim Premji, to shell, uh, to sorry, to sell his shares, okay, to sell his investments that he has done. Now, at this point, when that man told him in this way, 
Asim Premji thought, why can't I uh, try to make a successful enterprise? Or why can't I try to make a business of my own? Okay. Then he went on to make this company that is Wipro Technologies. Now this is one of, uh, uh, this focuses on information technology and consulting and business process services, okay, business services. So this in today's world is the largest independent research and development uh, giver or provider. Next lady on the list is Ekta Kapoor. She is the queen of Indian television sector, okay, the daily soaps that run uh, through Balaji telefilms. Uh, Hindi serials that run, okay? So she is the woman behind it. She is the creative, direct, creative director of Balaji Telefilms. So she has the whole responsibility of uh, sh showing you certain entertainment uh, platforms, okay? Showing you certain entertainment through the daily serials or daily soaps that go on. And she was uh, being awarded as the best entrepreneur of the year 2001 by Ernest Young, okay, Ernest Young. So at 19, she got into TV production. So when did, uh, she started at a very small age, at 19. So this is how she is known as the queen of Indian television sector. Now if you go to and go and see Star Plus, uh, yes, Star Plus, and I'm, I'm not getting the other channel, but, uh, she has her uh, creative ideas there. That's how she is ruling those channels through her daily serials. Okay, she's giving a lot of entertainment. Uh, there needs, see, there needs a lot of work in the background. Somebody has to write the script. It has to be looked after. It has to go in the same way. A sequence should be done. So she has, she's working on that sector. Okay, so she is, uh, she has to be appreciated for what she does. Next is Kiran Mazundar Shah. She is the bar managing director and the chairman of Biocon Limited. Now this is the largest biotechnology company in India. It's a biopharmaceutical company, okay, Biocon Limited. Uh, she started it in 1978 in a rented garage, okay, a small place. In the rented garage, she started this uh, Biocon in 1978. And that time she faced a lot of problems and uh, challenges. Okay, it was not an easy task for her and she started, she, she didn't have a big place, she did it in a rented garage, okay. And because, why she had this problem is, because of technology and biotechnology was a new field at that time, okay, when she began in 1978. And uh, a woman entrepreneur who got into this field was very rare very less, okay, men have taken a lot of uh, chances in this and a woman getting into this field of biotechnology was very rare. So she had to face that challenge that uh, to establish herself as a woman there among all the other men. But she didn't stay back. She felt that I have to cross all my odds and somehow make Biocon a success. So this is how she made her biopharmaceutical company a success, okay, it's a biopharmaceutical company. Biocon Limited. So these are few of the uh, entrepreneurs that are there. There are many others, okay? If you just go to Wikipedia, you will understand it. How many are there? Wikipedia is listed down for you. So, this is how we have uh, learned about the successful entrepreneurs that are there. Now, they have their own challenges, okay? They have their own ways to do it. Everybody's story uh, will not be inspiring just as the other, but some stories are really inspiring. Now, Certain things like, see, Azim Premji, he had to stay back when he was a student. So that barrier of not going to school didn't stop him. It made him feel that I have to do something. Even Kiran Mazumdar Shah, she didn't believe in the patriarchal way of dealing things. She said, I will stand and I will challenge my, uh, 
uh, ability that is there. Okay? Vargis Kuryan in the same way, Narayan Murthy, okay? Uh, Sudha Murthy is there, all right? All these people have contributed to uh, many aspects that are there in and around the world. Now, we have spoken only about people in India. But if you look uh, uh, on the uh, overview, we have a lot of people in India itself. If we need not go outside our boundaries, but there are people outside. There are people who have begun on their own. Setting up a small business on your own is a form of entrepreneurship, okay, when you are setting up your enterprise. Some people may make big names, but some people still manage to do it in their own way, maybe in a micro way, in a small way, or in the medium sectors that are there. So this is what we had to deal in this lesson, students. Uh, what I want you to focus on in this lesson is uh, the meaning, where it's derived from, then Okay, then what, see now there are two, three me, uh, uh, definitions that are given. Pick any one that's easy for you. Characteristics I told you, you have to merge them. Uh, when it becomes less, you remember more. So functions also uh, gets along with the characteristics. So mix them and read. Then role of an entrepreneur, some are similar to characteristics and functions. So mix them up again. Importance you can write on your own if you understand what it is. Self-employment opportunities, uh, okay, please remember MSMEs. Uh, then what are the other ways of uh, you can, where you can work. Then some schemes, okay, all may be important. Then organization, promotion organizations, again, all may be important. Then uh, successful entrepreneurs that are there. So this is what we have to do. We had to read in this lesson, students. Uh, in the next class, we'll come up with a fresh lesson. We'll come up with a new uh, chapter. Let's see which one we'll come up with. But we'll do a new chapter in the next class. Okay. And uh, that is how we will wind up. Uh, we wind up this lesson, entrepreneurship. By now, I hope for those who didn't know how to pronounce it, you know it. Okay, entrepreneurship, entrepreneur and entrepreneurship. All right, students, thank you very much for listening. I shall meet you in the next class.